Joselito, you're doing a, an audiobook. Congrats on that. Um, and you, uh, oh yeah, I, I, you, know, you know about my Fiverr person who mastered, prepared past audiobooks. You've reached out to him and I will put a link below. Um, yeah, and if you don't see my link below, please comment. <laughs> I'll, I'll have to find it later. Um, to you know, comment below to remind me. But uh, did I also work with a different audio engineer editor to first clean up your recording before sending it to him? As I'm practicing recording, I notice I have some mistakes as I talk rather than recording the whole. So Hosea, you, you're not perfect in recording all two, four, eight hours. <laughs> uh, absolutely not. So wow. okay, <laughs> yes. I'm surprised. I mean, you're you're human. <laughs> um, I'm I'm wondering who can help clean them up. Do you use somebody? Yeah. No, this is a great question. I did not. I'm sure some of the you know the audiobook creators probably do have someone additional now the person i mentioned could technically probably do that but that would be expensive because you know i think his his uh, his rate is better just for the mastering of it uh and getting the files all yeah anyway so what i do instead is i when i make a mistake i just so let's say i'm let's say that this is my audiobook okay and I'm reading this. I'm moving forward with recording my audiobooks of the. I'm moving forward with recording my audiobook of the printed book. You see what I did? I just simply paused for five to 10 seconds and then restarted the sentence. And by doing that, um, you know, uh, the guy, the Fiverr guy, you no, know, actually, so you could say that that's pretty much what he does. So he, when I do make a mistake, you know, the, basically he, he has to go through the whole audio anyway, just to check for like peaks and valleys and things like that when he masters it. So if he sees any silence, he will listen to that segment that had to, he will listen to where the mistake was and then chop out that sentence or paragraph when it, for when I restarted it. So yeah, I guess you could say he actually does that for me, but this is how I signal uh, the mistakes. So Joselito, but if you've already recorded everything, and you regret, if you listen to yourself back and you're like, oh my gosh, in minute three, I made an um, or in minute you know, 12, I, I said the word twice or something like that, or I said the wrong word. You could just give timestamps, minute, you know, three minutes, 13 seconds in, I said the word twice, please remove this, the first word or something like that. Um, oh, you know, 12 minutes in, I had an um, please. Remove. But honestly, more importantly, I would just, let those small mistakes go. I mean, it's not a, it's not a, it's not a mistake. I mean, you, so here's the thing, like I, 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 I've listened to audiobooks, right? Well-known people like Seth Godin have plenty of mistakes in their audiobooks. Have you, I, I don't know if you, I've listened to several Seth Godin audiobooks and I'm, I could very clearly tell what, where the mistakes were, you know, like he sometimes goes, mm, actually what I meant was this or whatever. I mean, literally, um, uh, Seth Godin and, and James Altucher, they both have plenty of mistakes in their audiobooks, and they don't mind. And they're, they still have huge number of fans, huge number of downloads for their audiobooks. And actually, um, James Altucher makes the audiobook uh, more like a podcast episode. It's very, very conversational. You know, he'll, he'll, he'll be reading, reading a chapter, and then and then stop in the middle and, and riff on his thoughts about it, which is kind of cool because I have the book, I have the Kindle book. And now as I'm listening to the audio book, I'm like, oh, hey, that wasn't in the Kindle book. He gets to just, it's like, yeah, you know, that makes, that brings me to a story I was thinking about, or, oh yeah, you know, one thing I wish I added in the book was about this tool that I didn't mention. So it's very conversational. Very common. And I think it works really well because a lot of audiobooks feel very stiff and um, official, quote unquote. Who has to be official? Everyone's just listening casually. No one's like listening, you know, broadcasting this to, to a class of students and every, you know, no one is listening in that official way. Everyone's enjoying themselves, walking the dog or washing the dishes as they're listening. So it's just like a podcast episode, except a little bit more put together, I guess, a little bit more produced. So, um, and Juliet mentioned, you know, Ben Hardy and Dan Sullivan have also added interviews at the end of each chapter of the audio version of the book, The Gap and The Gain. 
So yeah, so yeah, adding adding additional content in the audiobook is actually kind of a cool value add for those who already have the printed version or the Kindle book, and now it's like, hey, the audiobook has, yeah. So does that help, Posolito? Yes, I love these suggestions of like riffing or adding things because yes. I thought I just assumed you just had to just read it and then that's it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's now you know, and of course, people some people actually hire. Um, audiobook, you know, voice talent, right, to read their audiobooks. And uh, I have actually done that myself. For one of my audiobooks, I, I had, a, I paid a fan to do it. And, um, uh, and yeah, so when, when you hire somebody, then they are very, like, you know, buttoned up and how they, how they read the whole thing, and they have to be very perfect at it. Um, but just FYI, um, listeners, uh, usually prefer the author to read the book, um, not hired talent, unless the author's voice is somehow unpleasant, you know, and, and, and the higher talent is much, much more smoother voice or whatever, but usually they, they like hearing our voices. So, yeah. So other quick, one quick question, George, can you just give me any suggestions about expectations, managing expectations I have about um, putting my audiobook out there and because I've I don't read I don't listen to audiobooks myself yeah. and how how do you do how how are your audiobooks doing compared to your sure. um, Kindle and yeah printed let's, books let's take a look it's been a been a while since I've visited my my audiobook uh, sales dashboard so <laughs> let's take a look at this here um, so total of 300 okay let's get this clear I've got how many audiobooks do I have out there I think I have like three maybe and this is um, 392 units, total units sold in the lifetime, which I've been publishing audiobooks since 2018, probably. So, and I have, uh, I have three audiobooks. And I have, a, I have a fairly, I probably have a larger audience than most of you who are watching this. And so it's not, it's not a, number one is not a moneymaker. I mean, so I, <laughs> I think it's important. I mean, now the other thing is I don't probably promote the audiobook as much as I, I quote unquote should. Uh, I just let people find it who are my fans and they go and look me up on, on Amazon. And if they look me up on Amazon, of course, Amazon tells you that you have an audiobook version of this book as well. Right. Um, so yeah. So with the lack of promotion I do, I, I make very, very few sales. I mean, if, if you, if you look at um, uh, the last, the mm, last month, let's just say, just refresh results here. Look how many, look how, look how many I'm selling. One of each book, if I'm lucky. Two of each book, if I'm lucky. You see what I mean? So, meh, you know, I mean, I think audiobooks are particularly good for people who already have a large audience or the book has gone viral. And, and if the book's gone viral, of course, people are, many people are checking out the Amazon page for the book, which includes the audio version and, uh, and it's great. But for the rest of us, it's more of a service of convenience to our few readers, <laughs> and um, and you just might enjoy, you know, it's it's one uh, one other way to like re review your own book uh, by 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 you know kind of like going back to the whole book through through the whole book by just recording it and just kind of thoughtfully and then maybe adding a few things into it. So yeah, so so I'm glad you asked about the expectations because um, think of it as a really it's it's a it's a labor of love. Uh, it's a service to your few fans and probably you'll get more downloads if you promote it unlike i do <laughs> yeah so great thank you george thanks so much